Y'all know what's going on. It's time for another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Bacon. Welcome to the show, y'all. Today, I'm going to tell you a story about when I was in rotation back in the day, right? And most of y'all know I was the nine when I was in rotation. You know what I'm saying? I rose up a little bit higher than that. But this story is about when I was the nine train on the compound, right? All that means is that I was in charge, right? That's all that means. And as the person that's in charge, you have a lot of guys that are part of the organization that want to get to know you, right? And I was particularly... Uh, cool with a lot of younger the younger people that was a part of the organization and I that was intentional because I wanted to know you know what they thought how they acted in situations because that was the way that I could stay in contact mentally with my sons when I talked to them on the phone I could relate to the conversations they were having and the, the things that they were saying and and all this and that right because these young people would help me stay young keep me up on the vernacular keep me up on what music was popular and all this old kind of stuff right and this caused a lot of problems for a lot of the younger people, you know what I'm saying, that I was cool with. with them. Don't get it twisted, right? I wasn't an older dude trying to be young. I was just trying to find a way to stay mentally connected to my sons, you know what I'm saying, uh, while I was in here and they were out there. You understand what I'm trying to say? I hope y'all do. But here's the thing. There was this one young brother named Tori that I, me and him was cool, and he would work out with me every now and then, and, you know, we walked laps, and he would talk, and he would ask me a lot of stuff about, you know what I'm saying, uh, the business and all kinds of stuff like that. And he would also ask me, you know, about fatherly advice, and things that he should do and how he wanted to conduct himself when he got out and, 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 and what he wanted to do with the rest of his life. And another thing, too, he was in school, right, and I was a teacher's aide, and I used to help him with his math and all this, and I helped this young man get his GED. You know, and he was proud, he was happy, and I was happy for him, you know what I'm saying? I was so happy for him that, you know, I gave him $100, you know what I'm saying? And at that time, you know, I'm not going to say it's cool, but at that time, you know, he, he liked to smoke a little bit, so I made sure that he had him something to smoke. I know that was wrong looking back on that now, but I'm just trying to keep it 100 with you so you get a full understanding of the, you know what I'm saying, the, the bond that we had and all the things that I would do for him, right? I treated him like he was my son, you feel me? And... This caused a lot of problems for him because a lot of the older guys that were a part of the organization, and when I say older, I mean my age or even older than me, they felt like somebody younger shouldn't have that type of access to the nine, right? They felt like that I could be compromised and give him favor and show him, you know what I'm saying, favoritism in certain situations, whereas, you know, I'm not supposed to do that. And, and I didn't do it. I didn't do it, but they didn't look at it like that. They looked at it like you need to follow the strict protocols and, and you know, regular OSMs, you know, they really didn't just get to come around me a lot. But this brother and a couple of other younger brothers are allowed to do that. And again, like I said, it caused problems for us. So one day, you know, it came to my attention that some of the brothers were having an issue with it. And I understood how that went. So I tried to go talk to the brothers and explain to them what the issue was and all this. And telling them about how, you know, I'm just trying to make sure I understand the lingo of that age and all this and that. And told them why I was doing it and all this and that, right? They didn't want to hear that. They felt as though, you know, I wanted to hang around the younger people because I was trying to be young and all this and that. Had nothing to do with that. But anyway, at the end of the day, I told them, ain't nothing going to change, man. I kick it with them. I look out for them just the same way I look out for y'all, you know. And the biggest issue out of all of that came when they found out that, you know, whenever the younger brother needed something, I would make sure he got it, whether it be, you know, he's trying to get his money. You feel me? And they felt like I shouldn't even be giving him this and that. It was just because they wasn't getting it. Because they wasn't getting it. So they figured out a way to try to get me to turn against this young brother. And they hatched this plot, right? See, them young brothers, man, I'm going to tell you something. All you got to do is tell them they got, you got something free to smoke and free to drink. And they're going to show up at the party. And Tory wasn't no different. He wasn't no different. I had advised him, you know what I'm saying, to be careful of, 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 of the op and all you know, situations like that, right? But I never had told him that everybody to say that your folks ain't your folks. I never told him that. I wasn't even using that terminology back in the day, you know? But not at that time anyway. 
So anyway, they all down on the ball field one day, right? And every now and then, you know, I'd be down there with them. And they, they down on the ball field on this particular day that they knew that I wouldn't even be available to come out like it because I had to take care of being on some other levels. And so I wasn't there. And they knew I wasn't going to be there. So they got down and they drinking that cook-off. When I say cook-off, I'm talking about that moonshine, right? Everybody down there getting toasted. Toasted. You feel what I'm saying? I'm talking about toasted to the point to where you really don't even know where you at. Now, don't get it twisted. Back in the day, we could do that. We can't do that now because, you know, the police is everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Whether they got on blue or gray. When I say blue, I'm talking about inmates. When I say gray, I'm talking about the police, right? So, today you can't do that. But back in the day, you could. So this brother, Tory, right, he lived in this particular unit, right, not, not the same unit that I lived in. He lived in this particular unit where it was a lot of boys, right, a lot of boys. And a couple of the old heads that I was having problems with because they felt like that, you know, I was showing favoritism, they lived in that unit too. Now, they do the rules. Now, let me tell you something about the rules of, of GD. One of the rules, and we have several, you know what I'm saying, back in the day. I'm not in rotation anymore, but one of the rules is, it ain't none of that homosexual activity. None of that. As a gangster. You feel me? Am I saying the gangsters didn't do it? No. Nope. It's not what I said. Don't hear what I'm not saying. But what I am saying is that they know that that was against the rules. And they knew that I was a stickler for following the rules of the orb. I mean, up and down. Straight up and down. It didn't matter who you were. Catch you playing, off with your head. Catch you slipping, off with your head. They knew that about me, right? Everybody knew that about me. So let me tell you what they did to Tory, right? So Tory on that drink drink, right? They got him toasted. And listen to me, if anybody out there ever did them footballs, you know what I'm saying, or, or them blues, right? You know what's going to happen. They slipped him one of them number 10 vacuums. Got him. I'm talking about he tore up from the floor. Now, I don't know if anybody's ever, any of y'all that's listening, ever been on there, right? But in the few times that I have taken one of those, listen to me. The next morning, I don't remember nothing. I don't remember nothing, man. I'm going to tell y'all a story about that, right? You know what I'm saying? But anyway, check this out. They get tore back to the unit. He back up in the unit and he tore up. They done slipped him the pill. Now he did it. They took him to the cell, but he, he thinks it's his cell. And they tell him to get in the bed. He, he drunk. They, he think folks them looking out for him. He tell them, thank you, folks. Thank you, folks. Looking out, folks. Love y'all. Love y'all. And they saying the same thing back to him, right? So he thinking he is his cell. Now let me tell you something. See, when you want to pull off something in the penitentiary and you need to be in another cell, what you do is this. And I know a lot of people out there know what I'm talking about. What you do is this. You pay the person that's in the cell that you're trying to go to to go occupy your cell. Now, it's still got to be somebody that's black if you're black. It's got to be somebody that's white if you're white. You feel what I'm saying? Because when they look in that window, they need to see that you are the person that's supposed to be in that cell, right? But see, back in the day, you could get away with it. Not today, though. You can't get away with it today. Not like back in the day. Let me say it like that, right? So anyway, they got Tory in this cell, right? He think it's his cell, but it's not. They done paid the peon to go in Tory's cell, right? They done paid the peon to go in Tory's cell. Now, Tory, he sells with a peon, right? So when the peon that... Was in the cell that Tori's in, goes to that cell, the peon said, where my cell letter? He tells me, he said, man, uh, his brothers got him. They taking care of something. So he didn't think nothing of it. He didn't think nothing of it. He said, oh, okay then, that's what's up. So he goes on about his being, he leaned back and he chilling. Now, now Tori, in the meantime, between time, he down in the cell with this boy. And he's drunk and he's out of his mind. He don't know where he's at. He's trusting his brothers. Got him in the right spot. But he don't know what's going on. Now, Tori, he passes out. Passes out. Now, Brunham intentionally starts sending some of the other brothers by the cells. Said, Man, you see Brunham in that cell? Now, we got this little window at the front of the cells where you can look in them. You know, when you want privacy, you put the violation up. Can't nobody look in there, right? But there was no violation up. So, Brunham looking in there, right? And they done paid the boy. To be laying in the bed with him. You know, they ain't laying in the bed. Listen to what I'm trying to tell y'all now. They laying in the bed look like they spooning. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. They look like they spooning, y'all. For real, for real. So look. This is what I'm going to do. And don't y'all get bent out of shape about what I'm about to do, right? But I'm going to end this right now. 
And then I'm going to come right back today. It ain't going to be no delay. The same, the conclusion to this is going to be put up today. Well, this particular segment of it anyway. So you're going to be able to hear everything that's going down. Right, so don't get mad every time about Joe T. You left us a cliffhanger and you reduced the amount of time that you did your show. I'm not doing that. You still gonna get the 20 minutes out of me at the minimum. You feel me? Trust me on that. This has been another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker, and I say peace, y'all. I've been trying to breathe underwater.